Fortnite Season 9 debuts, and more coming up on today's episode of the latest in tech news. Hey Gadgeteer, you're just in time for the latest episode of the world's only 3-in-1 show on tech, gadgets, and gaming news. That's right, this is the latest in tech news. My name is Taylor American. If you're new here, click that subscribe button right now so that you don't miss the next episode. But hold off on any likes or comments until you get it to a section of the show that you actually like. And you're probably wondering right now, Taylor, why, 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 why so much Fortnite news? Um, because it's popular. I like talking about it, and I like playing the game. Sue me. I do the same thing for League of Legends if there's something interesting or new to announce, but it's a, kind of like more second or third base. Fortnite's kind of main interest right now. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about Fortnite. Too bad. And speaking of which, that's our debut feature story of today. We'll be going over Season 9. Very interesting changes. Uh, I'll tell you right off the bat, Ninja's not happy with some of them. He hates this game. Uh, I saw it on his stream quote today. He actually said it, so I'm not lying. Also, in terms of tech news, we'll be looking at U.S. adults are spending big on video games, mostly smartphones. Uh, interesting. We'll also be looking at, in terms of gadgets, Live Scribe giving the smart pen another shot. We'll be looking at a new... Lightspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse from Logitech, specifically the G502. We'll also be looking at some news regarding the Galaxy Fold. Is it actually fixed? We got a release date? Well, you'll find out. Listen up. And in terms of gaming news, we'll be looking at Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and we'll be looking at Predator Hunting Grounds. All that and more coming up. But did you know that initially Instagram was called Codename? But the name changed to Instagram before it was launched, and thank goodness it did. Um, I bet you don't even know where the name Instagram came from. Well, the name Instagram comes from a, a mashing up of Instant Camera and Telegram. So, in case you didn't know that, now you know. Moving right along to today in tech history. Today is May 9th, 2019, and on this day in history in 1996, Linus Torvalds decides to adopt Tux the Penguin as a mascot for the Linux operating system. Perhaps had he known the movie Happy Feet would be released a little over 10 years later, he would have chosen a warbler instead. And speaking of which, on this day in 1967, a National Center for Atmospheric Research, a pioneer in investigating weather patterns and other atmospheric phenomena using computers and other technology, dedicated its new building in Boulder, Colorado. The building stemmed from a $100,000 grant from the Max C. Fleischmann Foundation and was designed by renowned architect I.M. Pei. And a uh, well, pretty interesting building for um, its time, indeed. So with that out of the way, let's get on to today's feature story. Oh, and I just whacked the camera or some, something's in my eye. Are you, have you guys noticed there's something in my eye going on? Anyways, I think it might just be season nine jitters. Apparently a lot of people are crying over season nine. Um, <laughs> because here's what happened. I'll let you guys know. Not really much of a secret, but if you haven't logged in, you should probably log into the game and find out. The volcano blew up. Destroyed, tilted, and retail row. And then blew up the rest of the map. And people went into the bunkers, and they came out into the future of, well, Season 9. So, welcome. Um, <laughs> apparently, Fortnite's Tilted Towers didn't stay dead for long. In the new season that starts today, developer Epic Games revealed that the beloved loot-filled location is back as Neo Tilted, bringing the rest of the game into a future featuring shiny new buildings and mechanized pets. Fortnite is the biggest game in the world, the free-to-pay Multiplayer shooter has earned more than $1 billion, leading to huge investments in Epic and allowing the company to put that extra money into other efforts such as the Epic Games Store and the recent acquisition of Rocket League Studio Sonics. Psionics? Something like that. Yeah, it reminds me of an Incredibles uh, name that for a hero. Oh, it is! Flyronics! <laughs> I got it! <laughs> so... In addition to having a host of new emotes, weapon, and character skins, and other cosmetic items, unlockable, of course, via their new Battle Pass progression system, Season 9 also introduces a collectible called 
Fort Bytes. Players must decipher cryptic clues to find these microchip-like items scattered throughout the island. Gathering Fort Bytes will unlock even more rewards and secrets. Seasonal content updates in Fortnite is Epic's way of making the game feel fresh and interesting for its console, PC, and mobile players. Fans also look forward to a new season, which usually lasts around two months because the updates usually change the map in some way. Season 8 introduced an octave volcano, and the eruption of that volcano caused the futuristic world players now see in Season 9. Now, uh, these world-changing events create a loose but ongoing narrative that fans uh, love to obsess over. However, these frequent updates have come at a personal cost for some members of the dev team. According to a lengthy report from Polygon, Fortnite's success led to a toxic, stressful environment at Epic. Okay, guys, just calm down. Um, there are full patch notes here on this article, and there is a Season 9 cinematic trailer that uh, I'll have a link to, but I won't be playing today. So... Interestingly enough, I believe they removed a shotgun, but they introduced a new shotgun where you can hold down the mouse button and it'll fire extra times, and you can press space or something. I don't know. I'd really never figured that out, but apparently they introduced that. They introduced something called wind tunnels as well, all over the map. You can hop right into them, shoot out, shoot down, zoom all over, have fun. Uh, a bunch of other interesting mechanics, too. So... Nothing really new in terms of mechanics-wise, but it, more new territory that you have to figure out how to adapt and, and play. And if you're a proficient player of Fortnite, it shouldn't take you too long to figure out. Um, Ninja figured it out. He promptly threw a fit. Um, uh, him and, and, and Tim today were going at it, um, complaining about stuff that they liked, stuff that they hated. Um, apparently, Ninja at one point told Tim, maybe you should go into creative for 30 minutes and learn how to build. And then to which Tim replied, sick 90s, bro, um, referencing something in Ninja's past about him, like, doing sick 90s or something, whatever that means. So, you know how it is. So, are you guys enjoy Season 9 so far? Have you played so far? If you have, be sure to let us know down in the comment section down below and leave a like if you're excited and want to learn more about Fortnite and any upcoming changes that you might find relevant or of interest. Be sure to let me know. And uh, if you're listening to the podcast version of this, this video, <laughs> did you know? You could be going to youtube.com forward slash tech news gadget to get the full show on video. So, and if you're on the go, you don't have to watch this just via YouTube. You can watch this or listen in your car, audio format, while you're out for a jog on our podcast. So feel free. And uh, with that, let's move on to some more tech news. So apparently, U.S. adults are spending big on video games, playing mostly on smartphones. Now, this article introduces a couple new interesting tidbits that I wanted to briefly pull out and mention. Did you know that the average American video gamer is 33 years old, prefers to play on their smartphone, and is spending big on content 20% more than a year ago and 85% more than in 2015, a report showed today. The annual research from the Entertainment Software Association comes as more American households rethink how to set limits for kids who love gaming and how to allocate their entertainment budgets in the streaming era. The $43.4 billion spent in 2018 was mostly on content as opposed to hardware and accessories of pay-to-play games. Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Red Dead Redemption 2, and NBA 2K19 took the top spots for most units sold, but the list did not include free games such as Fortnite. Games are striking an important chord with American culture, said Stanley Pierre-Louis, ESA's acting president and CEO. That's what makes it the leading form of entertainment today. Nearly 65% of U.S. adults, or more than 164 million people, play games. The most popular genre is casual games, with 60% of players gaming on their smartphones, though about half also play on personal computers and specialized consoles. <laughs> I say specialized consoles. Yeah, um, let's see, how many do we got? We got the Switch, the, the PlayStation, and the Xbox. Uh, I, did I miss any? Don't think so. Uh, parents are limiting screen time for their kids and using video game ratings to screen content, and 87% of parents require permission for new game purchases, the study showed. Some 46% of all gamers are female, though they favor different kinds of games than men, particularly depending on age. Female gamers between 18 and 34 often prefer Candy Crush, Assassin's Creed, and Tomb Raider, and play mostly on smartphones, while their male counterparts mostly play on consoles, particularly God of War. Uh, okay. 
because it's an exclusive to PlayStation. Thank you. Madden NFL and Fortnite. Gen Xers, who are 40 to 54, lean towards Tetris, Pac-Man, Call of Duty, Forza, and NBA 2K. And male baby boomers age 55 to 64 like Solitaire and Scrabble. No surprise there, while women lean towards Mahjong and Monopoly. And game players were no more prone than other Americans to live isolated, sedentary lives, according to the report. Americans soon will have even more ways to play video games, apparently because Apple Inc. launching a video game subscription service and Google announcing that streaming service as well. So obviously new services will prevent challenges to establish video game devs uh, and it'll, it'll just go on. So nothing really new there, but uh, some interesting tidbits uh, indeed. So what do you guys think? Apparently, apparently I play Fortnite and God of War. I almost got that. Mostly, right? I don't play. I don't play Madden NFL. I rarely play. For me personally, I rarely play sports games. Um, games that I like to play are, well, Overwatch, League of Legends, Fortnite, God of War, um, Shadow of War, Division, games like that. So you, can, I can already figure out my genre of gaming and what kind of games I enjoy. Yeah, I don't think Solitaire, Scrabble, or Monopoly are even going to be up there. Um, if it did come down to Monopoly, well, my family and friends have banned me from playing with them because I usually always win. Don't don't give me games like that or Stratego or or chess because uh, I'll figure it out and I'll, I'll figure out ways out. I'm, I don't know. Have fun and win. They say they say I'm cheating. I'm not. I'm having fun playing a game. OK, I'm, I'm having fun playing a game. It's it's a strategy. It's a thinking game. So I, come on. <sighs> okay, I better stop talking before I get myself into trouble. Moving on to some gadget news, LiveScribe is giving the Smart Pen another shot. It's back with the next gen Smart Pen, improved apps, and an Office plugin. So, we haven't heard much from LiveScribe in the past couple of years, but today the company announced it's back with its next gen Smart Pen, improved apps, and an Office plugin. Like past models, the streamlined Ajir Smart Pen lets you digitize handwritten notes but this model is sleeker about the size of a traditional ballpoint pen and powered by new LiveScribe plus apps for mobile and desktop there's also a microsoft office plugin that lets users print any document with the LiveScribe dot pattern notes made with an ajir pen will be synced to the master document when the smart pen is connected to the computer so interestingly enough Ajir can store 1,200 pages of notes before it's connected to the LiveScribe Plus mobile app, which can digitize handwritten notes as text, PDF, image, or vector. The new app also brings additional features like audio recording and the ability to tap anywhere on your notes to begin playback from that moment. Plus, the app lets users add tags and search for keywords. You can pre-order the Ajir pens and download the Android app now, but you'll have to wait until May 15th to get the app on iOS and Windows Desktop. It'll be available on Mac OS later this month. Now, I guess Engadget first covered LiveScribe in 2007 when it looked something like a giant Sharpie and came with two microphones to record audio as well as handwritten notes. In 2015, they partnered with Moleskine, but the company has been quiet in the last few years. Previously, the biggest gripe Engadget had with LiveScribe was that any convenience from being able to handwrite notes was lost as soon as you tried to get them into your note-taking or word processor of choice. If this new, sleeker version makes it easier to transfer notes, LiveScribe might finally deliver on that convenience it promises. Even then, there's no guarantee smart pens will really ever catch on. I mean, we have our smartphones, so what do you need a pen for? Unless you like handwriting notes, now you can just tap away. Tap away to the keyboard right there. Tap away until your thumbs fall off. And then you'll have to dictate via voice. And, well, see, I just named the three options that we have. Uh, tapping away on a keyboard, voice, or writing like normal. So we'll see which one wins out ultimately in the end. It might just be a toss-up. I don't know. Which one do you guys prefer? Let me know down in the comment section. Always interested in what you guys are thinking or, or want to talk about or start a conversation on. Um, and if you're interested in looking forward to this, well, let me know. And I'll be sure to make a note. <laughs> Get it? Okay, uh, next. Moving on to some more gadget news. The Logitech G502 Lightspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse is out. And, well, IGN did a review on it. By the way, if you want the links to the articles for the show that we covered today, head on over to technewsgadget.net forward slash 113, or if you're listening via 
your smartphone on the podcast app you're choosing. However, you get more details, tapping or swiping. The article links are right there in the palm of your hand. You can just tap on the one you want and boom, it'll pop up for you. But for show purposes, we won't be going over the entire review today. We'll look at some parts of it. And then if you want to read the full review, well, we'll have the link for you to do so. Logitech's G502 is the company's most popular wired mouse, and for years people have said the only feature that could make it better would be if it was wireless. Well, Logitech has heard this request loud and clear, and today it's answering that prayer the world over by releasing a wireless version of the G502. This new wireless version has been rebuilt from the ground up with the latest light speed wireless tech, power play compatibility, and a Hero 16K sensor while sacrificing nothing in look and feel from the original. Coming to market at $149 US, it's crazy expensive, but has every feature its predecessor had while offering Logitech's latest wireless tech. For many gamers, this is the mouse of their dreams. Let's take a closer look. Ooh, design and features. It looks like they got some features that goes along with it. Now, if you're used to the original G502 or G502 Hero, then you have a good idea of what to expect here. The look and feel of the mouse hasn't evolved much since it was first released in 2014, and for good reason. In the briefing they had with Logitech, it shared that across their catalog of gaming mice, the G502 is easily the most popular. There's definitely a sentiment of, if it's not broke, don't fix it, so this year's version is big on internal upgrades while leaving the external design unchanged. Uh, I'm getting more into this review and I'm looking at it going, uh, my stupid Razer. Chroma Death Adder mouse needs an upgrade. <laughs> this looks juicy. Logitech. I don't know. I'm having a real toss up right now, guys. Please convince me. Do I go Razer for my peripherals or do I go Logitech? I don't know. I don't know. So, oh, also, by the way, if you're listening via podcast, did you know that we have video and images, photos? We're looking at photos of it on YouTube right now. Um, Yeah, it's pretty juicy. We're looking at the front side both sides with the buttons underside of it now the g502 is a beautifully angular mouse that ble blends sleek curves with touches of gloss against a mate shell it lends the mouse a futuristic look that would feel right at home in the world of cyberpunk 2077 its ergonomics feel similar to your beloved logitech mx master 2s yet the slightly narrow body allows it to work well for both palm and claw gripped gamers because <laughs> apparently that's the thing having never used the original g502 the author of this article and review was struck by just how comfortable and natural it felt in her hand a good mouse should feel like an extension of yourself as it translates your movements into the game and this mouse is a perfect example of that so fingertip gamers might find it a little bit too heavy though at 114 grams it does manage to come in seven grams lighter than the g502 hero but it's still one of the heaviest in Logitech's G line. The uh, light speed G903 is close, but still four grams lighter. That said, the modest extra weight is cleared by design and offers a nice alternative to the current trend up sub 100 G gaming mice. You can even customize it to be 14 grams heavier by fitting optional weights into a hidden compartment surrounding the sensor and, and 10 grams if you use the power play. While lightweight mice like the 80G G Pro Wireless have some appeal, well, the G502 Lightspeed about perfect. Lightweight enough to glide effortlessly across hard and soft surfaces, but heavy enough to offer excellent control. The mouse features a total of 11 programmable buttons. Apart from your standard left, right, and middle mouse click, two more are positioned to the left of your index finger. The mouse wheel itself tilts left and right for two more inputs, and below that is another programmable button underneath the mouse wheel clutch. You might Mistake it first for a DPI selector, but pressing it now displays the battery level with the three indicator lights along the left side. Below those are the forward and back thumb buttons, as well as a sniper button, which will lower the DPI as long as it's held, which is great for lining up long distance shots in PUBG. So I guess the buttons work out really well for it. Uh, let's see what goes along with it. In terms of software, they recently made the switch from its LGS software to G Hub, and the user experience is much better for it. Not only does it look much better, it offers one of the more user-friendly experiences with peripheral hardware. Each of the buttons on that mouse can be customized to offer an array of functions. Want to record a macro? Easy enough. Go to the Actions tab and select the option for recording macro and type in your command string. Now, what's really interesting, though, is that you can turn this into a sequence, going from a text string to launching a program to executing a system command. Programming all of this is easy thanks to an intuitive 
graphical interface. Finally, finally, for those of us who like to manually assign keys and macros and everything else that goes along with it, you can also assign a mix of commands, actions, and keys on the respective tabs. Keys are the simplest of all since they're really just keystrokes, but commands and actions are where things get interesting. And, um, well, the only downside is you can't add programs yourself, and there's only a small handful of available programs currently. That said, there's a lot of utility here, and you can map commands and actions to an entire second layer, expanding the G502 to 22 programmable buttons. And then there's lighting effects. Yeah, did you know there's lighting effects? The G502 light speed isn't gaudy with its illumination, but you can customize the Logitech G logo and a group of indicator lights on the left side. You can select a color and opt for a handful of effects, though it's pretty basic. If you have other Logitech peripherals, you can sync between them pretty easily. So with that, uh, they also have DPI speeds, and as such, you can customize it for PUBG, Battlefield 5, Witcher, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Fortnite, you name it. We got it. So... That covers all of basically the highlights of this mouse. If you want the full in-depth review, we have it on IGN. And the link to that is in the show notes. Enjoy. Moving right along to our last gadget news. Well, apparently I've been talking a lot about the Galaxy Fold from Samsung for, well, pff, goodness, the last couple of months because it keeps popping up in the news. Well, finally, it's fixed. Remember how we said we don't know when it's going to come out? It could be indefinite, but we'll keep you posted when it does come out. Well, Samsung's Galaxy Fold was supposed to be on store shelves right now, in case you didn't know. But then it started breaking down, and now there's talk of a new release date coming soon. Speaking to the Korea Herald in an interview today, Samsung Mobile Chief DJ Ko said that Samsung will decide on the Galaxy Fold's release date in the coming days. The report also said that Samsung has resolved the reported issues involving its main display. There's no date yet for the relaunch, but a Samsung spokesperson said one would be set soon. We plan to announce, announce the release date in the coming weeks. So keep in mind, guys, Samsung had been working on a device for years and unveiled it in February. The company had hoped to get the $2,000 smartphone to store shelves on April 26th. However, after the problems, while trouble erupted, reviewers said that there's weird things going on with it. Um, others who got their hands on a device early said that the gap between the screen and the hinge on the back, which allows the smartphone to fold, was too wide and allowed debris to get behind the screen and damage it. So it was bad news, so they pulled back on everything. However, AT&T did let it slip last month that a Galaxy Fold would be released on June 13th. It's unclear how... Un a and T and T determined that, and whether Samsung conveyed the message initially. Judging by Ko's comment, it would appear that Samsung hasn't made any decisions on a device just yet, but at least now we know Samsung has determined what's happening, fixed it, hopefully, and is getting ready to move forward with a release date, and hopefully no more hiccups. No more hiccups, because, you know, people want to have a foldable phone. They want to be able to snap their fingers in it and go, oh, dang it, Samsung. Um, that was an attempt at a joke, so if you could laugh, that would make me feel better. Thanks. <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot to switch the story over. Gosh, I was laughing. Sorry, and I whacked the microphone. I'm sorry, guys. I probably just popped your eardrums. Um, good thing mine didn't. <laughs> I'm still good to go. So, on to some gaming news. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is on Epic Game Store, not on Steam. As if this was any surprise to us, but I gotta cover it. Here you go. Ghost Recon Breakpoint just came out with a trailer today interesting interesting game apparently they had a face reveal at the end of it i'm nope mm -mm. i'm not seeing any spoilers on it but it is out on youtube if you want to look up ghost recon breakpoint and see the trailer that goes along with it you guys will enjoy it ubisoft has confirmed that the upcoming ghost recon breakpoint will be an epic games store exclusive much like other ubisoft releases like anno 1800 and division 2 the new game will launch on pc via the epic game store alongside ubisoft's own digital distribution service you play so the reveal here really isn't too much of a surprise to pc players who have already seen the past two ubisoft releases switch from steam to the epic game store however this partnership has been made in sync with the announcement of ghost recon breakpoint and there's still no chance of snagging the game on steam at all so if you're like well I'm, i want to the only reason i play is because of steam um guys friendly competition always helps filter out garbage going on and uh chunks the 800 pound gorilla down into actually if you guys want something fi that works moving forward and, and and something that is new and fresh and updated and has features that you like and want and need 
it's okay to rattle the 800 pound gorilla's cage from time to time. Epic Games did a really good job of that. Okay? Don't blame them for that. And uh, as for their store, good on them. You know? Steam sat there thinking it was going to be the undisputed king for decades to come. And then Epic Games came in and said, hey, guys, indie game developer, check this out. Boom. There you go. Scared them out of the room. And now they're like, what the heck's going on? I think they probably just torched the cage, dusted it. And then the 800 pound gorilla is currently running around the room trying to figure out what the heck to do. And um, <laughs> Epic Games is just sitting in the corner with the banana going, hey, guys, look over here. Um, but of course, if you're against having to download, install, and manage your games through another client, then options still exist to buy Ghost Recon Breakpoint directly from Uplay. As with any Ubisoft games on Steam, well, you always had to launch the game through Uplay anyway, so... <laughs> this exclusive deal shouldn't make life any more complex for PC gamers. Earlier this year, Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney said on Twitter that if Steam committed to a permanent 88% revenue share without major strings attached, Epic would hastily organize a retreat from exclusives. So, I, I love how this goes down between the CEOs. So we suppose Valve knows just exactly what it has to do to stop Epic's continuing strategy of chasing exclusivity deals, just as we suppose Sweeney knows exactly how unlikely it is to do so. You can read all about Ghost Recon Breakpoint's new features here as well. Whichever digital marketplace you choose, you can expect Ghost Recon Breakpoint to release on October 4th, 2019. You guys excited? Well, oh, shoot. I wasn't supposed to show that picture. Well, you just have to... <sighs> Thank goodness you're listening to the podcast because I just showed a picture of it. So go watch the trailer. Enjoy it. And you'll figure out more details about it. And for our final gaming news of today, Predator Hunting Grounds was announced and gameplay details have been revealed, but it's not the actual in-game play. It's just a trailer. So it's just teasing some of the stuff to come and, and, and what to expect. So Hunter, Predator Hunting Grounds is an asymmetrical multiplayer action game that has been revealed. The announcement came as part of Sony's State of Play for May 9, 2019, alongside a cinematic trailer for the game and we have the trailer right here but we're not going to be watching it the trailer features a group of well-armed soldiers exploring what appears to be a south american jungle before panning up to reveal a predator decloaking itself in the trees above them now obviously if you're sitting there watching the trailer there's a telltale sound that goes along with it you, you can't miss it if you've seen the movies then it's right there you don't even have to see them decloaking to know uh yep predator right there so according to the reveal announcement it pits a fire team against a stealthy killing machine. And a post on the official PlayStation blog went further into detail on gameplay elements, explaining one group of players will control members of an elite fire team who pack state-of-the-art conventional firepower from shotguns and SMGs to sniper rifles and more. Meanwhile, one player will control the Predator, a stealthy acrobatic killing machine bristling with exotic alien tech, such as the infamous plasma caster as the fire team attempt to carry out paramilitary missions annihilating bad guys and recovering important items the predator will be closing in using its advanced vision mode to track and ambush its prey predator hunting grounds is being developed by the phonic in conjunction with 20th century fox and is currently planned for a 2020 release window on the playstation 4 so that's all we know so far the game ooh, definitely looks interesting it's definitely a genre changer um, definitely a game changer that I will say too. So if you guys are excited about that, be sure to let us know down in the comment section. Um, and we'll make sure to keep you guys appraised of this game. And if you're not, well, let me know either way. Hey, I want to know more about Fortnite. Fine. Okay. You win. We'll do more Fortnite stories. <laughs> Apparently none of you want to know about predator hunting grounds and I'm punching the microphone again. Stop punching the microphone, stupid arm. I'm going to have to yell at it later. So with that being said, I think that about wraps it up. Oh, look, it did. I pressed the right button this time. Yippee. So <laughs> that wraps up the latest episode of the latest in tech news. Thanks for tuning in, guys. New episodes every weekday. The latest in tech news can be found on every major platform, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, Overcast, and more. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to let us know by clicking that like button and leaving a comment. Also, double check that you are subscribed so that you don't miss the next episode. I'm your host, Taylor America, and remember, for the latest in tech, gadgets, and gaming news, visit technewsgadget.net. Pretty much, keep being awesome, guys, and I'll see you on the flip side. Or in the arena, because Fortnite. <laughs>